Sing it. Wait, do what Chuck says. Do. But I don't know what song you're doing. You were doing. He's, just, he's, do just, I'm he's doing, just making holiday notes. I'm doing uh, Old Lang Syne. Oh, okay. 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 Hey, everybody. It's Griffin McElroy from My Brother, My Brother, Me Brothers. And this is our annual Candlelight Special live in Huntington, West Virginia. Thank you, everybody who came out. Uh, apologies to the ones that couldn't make it. We had a really great time. You're about to hear us open up the show with some beautiful carolers from Heart in the Park. It didn't come out super good uh, in the final mix, but it was fun if you were there. Uh, so share this episode with your family. There's no uh, there's no swears in this episode. There were a, a couple swears in the live environment, but we went ahead and nipped those in the bud. So go ahead and share this with Peepaw, Poopaw, Pumpaw, and Pumper, your dog Pumper. And joyous candle nights. That was just a nightmare. The McElroy brothers are not experts. <laughs> and their advice should never be followed. Travis insists he's a sexpert, but if there's a degree on his wall, I haven't seen it. Also, this show isn't for kids, which I mention only so the babies out there will know how cool they are for listening. What's up, you cool babies? Joyous Candle Nights. My name is Justin McElroy and I'm your oldest brother. Welcome to my brother, my brother, me and advice show. For the modern era. Feliz Nava Candle Nights. I'm your middlest brother, Travis McElroy. I'm the sweet baby brother, Griffin McElroy, and I want to apologize for after all that stuff we planned, my introduction to you was I screamed the word intimate into my microphone, <laughs> thereby unraveling the scarf of intimacy that we worked so hard to Griffin unravel. Griffin makes an excellent point because what we've done is we planned carolers, we made a video, we had a whole thing, there was a Grinch, and what we did is we planned right up until the start of My Brother, My Brother right. and Me, and then we didn't plan anything after that. <laughs> oh, I, I planned something. It's right here in this bottle. I mean, I'm... You have a can in your hands. <laughs> you play it poorly. Oh, this bottle. Right. No, this actually, this can is part of my new Keep It Cool... <laughs> my new Keep It Cool live show lifestyle. Yeah. Let me tell you folks about it. It's called Wait to Make Some Room. Here's how it works. So let's say you do mm, three shows as part of Candle Nights. How is this tree back? <laughs> I bought that at the dollar store. What's up, house left? Uh, it's called Wait Till You Make Some Room. So here's how it it's works. It's called what? It's called Wait Till You Make Some Room. Uh, so is let's that, say. Is that Simlish? Is that the Sims language? No, it's. It's, it's Wait Till You Make a Some Room. Here's okay. how it works. Uh, let's say you do three shows, you have a certain level of uh, drunk that you need to be for each one. The first one, none, it's perfect. It's called Things About You, it's perfect. Artistic creation that is a, symbi a symbiosis of art and commerce. It's perfect. 
so you don't have to be drunk for that. Sawbones, uh, drunk enough that I have to forget that I'm married way above, uh, way above my class. <laughs> it's a certain level. But then, okay, so wait to make some room. Here's how it works. You pour the liquor into the can of uh -huh. soda, but here's the thing. Before you can pour the liquor in, you gotta wait to make some room. <laughs> So you got you a one in, one out. Get out of here, regular liquid. You're pacing yourself. You're saying, whoa, whoa, 10 year bullet bourbon. I'm gonna enjoy some more of you. And I do wanna be clear here. He's got 10 year age bullet bourbon, which he is going to pour into Diet Dr. Pepper. That's fine. Hey, eat a biggin, okay? How much was that bottle? Can I say that? Is this candlelight's yeah, appropriate? Yeah, biggin, biggin is fine. Um, the Can I bottle. Just it's not important. It's a it's the candle nights. Um, so this is a, an advice show for the modern era. We're, this is an episode where we're not going to swear at all. We should point out, which is um, we are going to try really be, hard not to swear at all. Bye, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly our production quality jumps up yeah. to ten. I was really worried when they started because I couldn't see Griffin super good. <laughs> but, the, but then Jelson flipped that tiny plastic switch on that tiny plastic street lamp and suddenly all became clear. I had to explain it so the people at home knew what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, this has been, fellas, I don't know how you feel about it, kind of a swearing day. Like if I made it to the end of this day under normal circumstances, it would be 9 p.m. I would put on my sweat shorts and I'd be like... Swords. Shorts, I guess you could just Swords. Sure. And then I would just like kick up the ottoman and I'd be like, time to do some <laughs> swearing. Let's start with my favorite ones. <laughs> and then I'd say my, fa I, I wish I could tell you what my favorite ones, but I can't because it's Candle Nights and that's not what we're going for that's here. That's not what Candle Nights is about. Uh, I don't know what it is about, but I know it's not that. Uh, we'll find it by the end of the episode. Going back listening to old Candle Nights episodes, I've realized they're beautiful and we've pitched this holiday in the, the perfect way, but none of us have had a moral revelation. Except maybe Justin at the end of Kayla Nights 2014 when three ghosts visited and were like, hey, drink less on stage. <laughs> Only they didn't get around to you until like January 16th. You know, it's funny, we'd ruin Kayla Nights by swearing the show, but there's a lot of Christmas uh, things that would be a lot better if they had swearing in them. I was thinking about this today when I was watching Emma Otter's Jug Band Christmas. Yeah. How, how, how much money would you give to see one of those little otters just be like, mother grabber. Like, but not, but they'd say the bad thing. The bad one, the bad, the bad one. Should we like, do some? Uh, what oh. if Scrooge? Oh, there's more. Okay. What if Scrooge is just like, they're like, can we have some money, Scrooge? And he was like, son of a, and then he said the rest of it. The next word that comes in that usually at the end of it. Uh, this is an advice show. Don't laugh. <laughs> my family is doing a gift exchange this year, and my sister-in-law, as of last March, is buying a present. A cast iron skillet. Spoilers, come on! <laughs> for my wife. Save that for the end of the question. You don't know how to build suspense. By the way, I know you've been wondering. It's a cast iron skillet. Dun, dun, da 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 my wife's Christmas list did not specify the type of cast iron skillet that she would like, rookie mistake. But knowing her, I have reason to think she would prefer a different type than the one that was purchased. Uh, brief wait, sidebar. Wait, 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 what, what character traits? Yeah. Like, well, I know that she hates Mondays and loves chocolate, so <laughs> she wants a Dutch oven. Like, what? That, okay, so not a cast iron skillet. Not a cast it iron skillet. It could be. You could have a cast iron Dutch oven. What a uh, skillet. I, I like that's what, that's what you have issue with, and not that somebody wants a cast iron skillet, just not that cast iron skillet. If you can't figure it out on your own, it doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. You know I only like ceramic handles. That's one of the things about me is I love ceramic handles. I said ceramic handles three times because I worried it would sound like ceramic candles, and that doesn't make any sense. A sincere Ooh, concern. Yeah. Welcome, God, by the up. way, welcome behind the veil. Um, but I have reason to think that my sister-in-law prefer a different type than the one that was purchased. I'm not about to ask my sister-in-law to return it and get a different one. 
but is it okay for us to return it and get a different one ourselves once the present has been opened and thank yous have been given, given etc.? It might not be an issue for most people, but since my sister-in-law is relatively new to the family, I don't want to do anything that might accidentally insult her. And I know this is getting long, but hanging with me, there's a twist. Uh, and she will know if we do this because my brother, her husband... Is an octopus! Why would she be an octopus? It's just a better twist than the twist. Go ahead. And do it. My brother... You've ruined the tension. This isn't even... Build it back up, start at the beginning. <laughs> it was a dark and stormy night. Call me my Ishmael. Octopus. What's up with cast iron skillets? It was the best of times. It was the worst of skillets. Okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> Pick it up. Let's take it the, from... And she said to know. one. Let's take it from the exact word I stopped at. <laughs> uh, she will know if we do this because my brother, her husband, and I share an Amazon account. What do you think, brothers? Should I return the president and restrain the relationship or should I leave well enough alone? And that's from sauteing in South Bend. Can I just say... Are you here? Is that thing something? Are you? No. no. Cool. I'm deeply in love with the audience reaction. <laughs> Very yeah. much. You, you guys it reacted in the, in like the a Spanish soap opera. Oh. Dios mío. Oh. Whoa. Because that's what I wanted you to do, and you did. You did. I think it's busted how every, like, everybody thinks all commerce... Why is everyone laughing? Did I swear? I think it's a bust how everybody thinks all commerce has to go through Amazon. I think they, they're laughing because you said busted like a character on Ghost Rider. <laughs> hey, gang. Hey, gang. <laughs> What's Ghost Rider spelling on the wall? We gotta bust this. Anyway. Take it from me, Sheldon Turnipseed, the actual name of a person on Ghost Rider, Sheldon Turnipseed. I forget what I was gonna say, fellas. Made, I think it's... Made some room. I think it's bad and wrong. You poured it into a cup, that's cheating version of making room. Um, I think it's... No, I'm gonna go with the original. I think it's busted how everybody thinks all monetary transactions have to go through Amazon, and you could... You, you got to do a, a street return. Just take this new cast iron skillet thing into Pullman Square Plaza and just carry it around saying, like, who, who wants this skillet? No. no. I, skillet here? Your problem is no one wants, and correct me if I'm wrong here, audience, no one wants a new cast iron skillet. Right. Like, what's the fun of that? You need it pre -seated. You want a stank. You want your great-grandmother's old yeah. busted skillet. Travis Patrick! Oh, no! No, you can say that no, on TV. No, three strikes, three strikes. That's you can one. say that on TV. Three strikes. Your old donkey skillet. The, you, want, you want a skillet so old that something in it at one point had a racist slang name, right? <laughs> uh, sorry, Grandma, did you... Do you mean bacon? <laughs> sorry, wait, Grandma. Did you mean to say... Bacon just then instead of the thing that you did say because that's not what we call it ever <laughs> This is polite society Could you take it could you take it could you take it to like uh, 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 Cluckers or something and have them just like DJ dip, Cluckers you mean, it? you mean roosters It's not no, well, we don't want to get sued. Anybody here eat at Roosters since you've been here? Yeah, what's it's up? It's like half our audience. How did that happen? Jason, a, don't raise your hand. They got of course a, you've eaten at Roosters. They got a lot of TVs, right? Um, you were yeah. saying? Yeah. You were saying? Deep fried TV. We'll talk about hunting stuff later. Go All ahead. All right, go. take the pan to Roosters. Say, can you just dunk this? Give it a speedy crusting. <laughs> Maybe one of the chefs puts it down his shirt for a work day, and you get that natural That cookie. increases the price by 25 American dollars. Yeah. yeah. You, gotta put some, you gotta put some sweat equity to, into it. Literal, mm -hmm. literal sweat equity. Um, I like quick poll, quick poll of this table. Griffin, Justin. Yeah. yeah. How much would you pay for a cast iron skillet? Do not answer audience. 
What? Why can't they? You're being really because rude. Because I want you to answer. There's hundreds of people here, and you just pull. Oh, I'm going to pull them in a second. Okay, raise this your hand. This is going okay, long. Let's do this. Raise your hand if you pay ten dollars, and then we'll just go up in value. No, why would we and do put this? Put it down. When Sia, okay, I see like one. Bad, start bad long game. Okay, twenty. Please no. just get to the joke. If there's a joke, God help me. Please just say it. No, my point was is that I think that in this day and age, if you went up to someone and said, "I will sell you this cast iron skillet for twenty-five dollars," they would be like, "Yeah." On the street, homie. What's your fear that you're getting a knockoff cast iron skillet that is not name brand? Hey, why is Dean? Paula Dean spelled with four E's? <laughs> I like how her face is printed on it for <laughs> sure. This is a Paolo Dean. That can't be right. This is one Pablo Dean. It doesn't even make sense. Hey, does anybody want a Yahoo answer from the Yahoo Answers website and service? If you're unfamiliar, we take questions from the Yahoo Answer Service and try to answer them before everybody eh, on Earth did it. Uh, Fallon, I, I know if he's you're here. here. If you're here, Fallon, eyes no, on no, you, No, no, don't boo. He's adorable. Yeah, he's great. Well, great All guy. right, let's do the thing. It's by level. It was sent in by level nine thousand. Yeah, Drew, Drew, Drew Davenport. Thank sure, you you're here. <laughs> he's usually here. No, that would be amazing. No, that's too far. We'll find him out next year. At the top of. The Yahoo page, there's a little promotion that says get double points throughout December on answers. Is it time for me? Is this the time to strike and become an active member? I take I so. so much from Yahoo answers. Is it time I put them back into Give. the ecosystem? Give. I worry that you'll draw too much attention to yourself. That's a good point. I don't want to poison the well. This one's asked by a Yahoo answers user. It's anonymous and for good reason. <laughs> we'll call him Purvis. Asks. <laughs> What? It's a name. Purvis asks, why am I attracted to the weight gain belly scene from the movie The Santa Claus? I'm so happy. How's your candle nice? Mine's good so far. I'm a straight male, always have been. There's no doubt to that. Maybe slight confusion. Wait, okay, maybe slightly what? I'm a straight male, always have been. There's no doubt about that. Maybe slight confusion. Just like Oni. There's a backspace key on your keyboard. There's no doubt, there is. Too late now. You know what? Don't I'm read that last sentence. <laughs> I want that stricken from the Yahoo record. Now that I think about it, I've dated exclusively men. <laughs> I guess I'm pretty- I can see where that would be confusing. Yeah, I can see why this would be confusing. Uh, I'm attracted to the whole weight gain fetish thing among women and only women. Nothing crazy like serious gaining, uh, but a little bit of chub around girls' stomachs that create a little gut is attractive to me and I didn't read this part and I'm uncomfortable <laughs> on the stage now. Uh, the next part's too gross to read. When I say grow, oh, all right, uh, the humiliation factor Wait. and seeing the girls act or whatever and hearing dialogue or monologue gets me aroused a good bit. All right, let the record show there were no bad words in what Griffin just said. But I would say so mature ch concepts. Challenging ideas. Mostly say. just the idea of being aroused during a monologue. Uh, he didn't specify the topic either. Uh, my question. Can we take our robes off yet? I need to get. I need to work. Pretty hot. Woo. Uh, cool. My question. Yeah. Now is, I'm comfortable. My question is why, for that particular scene only, do I get a similar feeling? If if memory serves in the Santa Claus with an E, uh, there are several scenes where Tim Allen. No, there is one specific where I believe he turns. I'm sorry. Profile. I. Mm. and in the mirror watches like buttons pop off his yeah. shirt as he Ooh, like slow down <laughs> ooh mommy <laughs> again again if you if you remember the scene he then turns full onto the camera and does this for 15 minutes <laughs> so you can understand where this he just gets bigger and bigger <laughs> bigger and big if you sorry what's that nope 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 
Uh, if everybody get that on Twitter, I'll do it one more time. Why, why is any of this, yeah. Justin is Nobody's about to- putting this on Twitter, get yeah. your cameras out. That's because it's ethically bad. It's ethically bad for them to do that thing you said. So Tim Allen, I think what you've got here is a, uh, you've got a lot of ideas that we we're growing up loving. A lot of cross wires. A lot of cross wires, right? Everybody loves Santa. Ho, 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 green giant. Well, well stole that. Yeah. One of them stole it. Uh, and the, everybody loves Santa. Kids growing up loving Santa. And then Tim Allen, I don't, didn't need I say more? I hope that you guys would say America's something else. America's sexiest actually. comic. America's sexiest uh, no comic slash novelist. Uh, his, oh his, my God, why am I here? Changed my life. Yeah. It's, why, it's why I'm a Zen Buddhist. I wish that was not have, true. Have you seen, yikes, have you seen? Whoa, sorry, pump of the brakes. <laughs> yeah. I just found out Travis got his religious theology from Tim Allen. Sorry, the show is canceled. I We're only I talking was... about this now. I believe I was 14 and his views really unlocked something first, within me. The first annual Allen Nights where Travis... <laughs> the show has come to a halt to tell you tell us more. Well, the, uh, there's a metaphor running through the book of him trying to find the perfect hood ornament. <laughs> the perfect chainsaw. <laughs> And what's great about it, and I feel truly moving, is he finds what he thinks to be the perfect ornament, like we all have. And then when he sees it the next morning in a clearer light, he realizes it's not as beautiful as it oh, was on man. the show floor. And he yeah. realizes that what is truly important in life is his wife and kids. And not a hood, hood ornament. ornament. Okay, good. And you and read I that. Think you read that, and in the other hand, I was fourteen. Yes. In the other hand, you were holding a big bag full of hood ornaments, and you're like, <laughs> "What am I becoming? No. Why did I sort through so many of these?" I, we are not talking about the matter at hand, which is this person's Tim Allen Chub Chub. <laughs> his his double trouble Chub Chubble Bubble. And I guess we're just not gonna. I, I would I, say this, if it is confusing for you, I, my 35 years on this planet have proven one thing and one thing only, and that is not that hard to not see a Santa Claus movie. I was gonna say, how often is this coming up that you're like in the middle of, I don't know, getting your license renewed at the DMV and you look no, up no, and no, no, Santa Claus, oh God, can, I have to go. Can you change the channel, please? Nah, God, that guy got too worked up. Um, so, yeah, and it's specifically not that scene, right? Like, it's not the whole movie. It's just the part where he gets large and in charge, right? Um, I got another question. I've bought a book for a friend. What time did we start, by the way? Uh, it's, it's been like four minutes. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, I bought a book for a friend as a gift. This is pending Candle Nights festivities. While waiting for the approaching holiday, I've been hearing amazing reviews and have been seeing it on a number of years' best lists. How morally reprehensible, sorry. <laughs> How morally reprehensible is Nailed it this. to read a book prior to gifting? <laughs> That's from Dishonorable in Davidson. All the, hey, all the information's used up. Ah. <laughs> there's, there's only love left in this copy of Eat, Pray, Love. <laughs> this is garbage. You used up all the story. Wait, why is, no, don't contextualize it. The idea of if you said anything, like I, I bought a sweater for my friend and I wore it first, no one would be like, that's fine, you can wear it again. No, no, it's a present you bought for someone, you're not allowed to read it beforehand. What's the alternative? Go get it yourself. It's $6.99, it's a book. And that's, hey, hey everybody, if you're wondering why it seems a little hot this winter, it's because old, uh, old climate change Trav is uh, trying to just like waste, a lot of wastefulness, I think. In my, in my book, in my America. <laughs> One more, and what, two more words about that. Paris Accord, what? <laughs> trying to get it fixed up. A little hot out there today. Dad has his head in his hands right now. That's not a joke. <laughs> <laughs> just a little, it seems a little steamy out there in my America. I don't know. Maybe everybody should like. There's a picture of me reading a book. <laughs> <laughs> no, you bought a 
book and they cut a tree down to make that book and they paved paradise and put up a parking lot. We got libraries for a reason. Go to the library and get him pray love too. Congratulations, Mr. McElroy. He's your library card. We're excited to have you. Thanks. I need books that nobody's touched. <laughs> I need your new shipments. Well, we have like a new highlights magazine. I guess if that's, <laughs> that's if that's have. it. Um, we have some books about how bad climate change is. Nobody's touched those. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Let's Thank change you. some minds. Let's change some minds. I'm sorry, I spilled on the uh, thing. We got another Yahoo? Yeah, sure. Hit me. How about this one? Uh, this one, oh man, there's so many good ones. Uh, thank you to everybody who sent these in. This yep. one was sent in by Don Ames. Thank you, Don. It's by Yahoo Answers User. Sorry, something has gone wrong. I'm gonna try refreshing the page. Do you have a Wi-Fi? I'm on that. Those fat pipes. Thank you, Big Sandy. We have we have. Uh, Sandy by is the, way, the IT fun, person here. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> fun fun bit of trivia yeah, for people who uh, live here. When we tell people we were doing the show at the Big Sandy, everybody was like, whoa. And then we had to tell them, it's like, no, not where, no. <laughs> not where, like, the He-Man live stunt show would be. But, like, <laughs> oh, so it's 1992. Yeah, not where they do World of Wheels and have all the, the trucks and tractors come in, but, like, over here, where they do. But, in, the, uh, in the prom crypt. In the, <laughs> in the, this actually might be the room I had my prom in. Oh yeah, no, this place is a regular like teen boner storage facility. <laughs> there are prom boner ghosts all over this I, place. I, oh, I just walked into a cold spot. Yeah. Ooh. I once saw, I once saw American hero and West Virginia native Chuck Yeager, first man to break the sound barrier. What's up, Chuck? You make it tonight? No, he didn't make it, but. Uh, you want to talk about cool intros? I want to saw Chuck Yeager come onto this stage in sweats. Is my wife in this room? Am I lying, Sydney? <laughs> come on the stage in sweats and say, I got this video about me. We're going to watch that first. <laughs> Ten minutes. <laughs> what, Chuck? Did you just start with a video about yourself that you started? He introed a video about himself. Sydney, am I lying? She says, no, I'm not no, lying. No, for those of you at home, no, he is not lying. Also, for those of you at home, no, we literally did that exact same thing when we entered our show, kind of. <laughs> okay, but wait. Hold on, wait. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. It's fine because we're not wearing sweatpants. Oh, dang! Uh, <laughs> the difference is we were singing uh, in Christmas pageants and he was breaking the sound barrier. So... <laughs> I feel like an a-hole. Okay, go ahead. And now a 10-minute video of Chuck Yeager. <laughs> I wish. Oh, man. He's a hero. That would be so much better than our stupid show. Fascinating life, that guy. Chuck Yeager asks, Wouldn't it be great if he was like a 10-minute video of me knitting my true fashion? Chuck Yeager asks, <laughs> Who stole my Christmas goose? Stole my Christmas goose. I built a fence around him and it was 12 feet high. <laughs> I'm just now picturing that. Yeah, my reading comprehension is just now kicked. That's a high A fence. I built a fence around him and it was 12 feet high so he couldn't jump out and I know he didn't run away, but he did, but he know. But he know there. <laughs> and I can't find him anywhere. Who stole my Christmas goose? It was the Hanukkah fox. <laughs> Hanukkah, the Hanukkah fox snapped the neck of your Christmas goose with his powerful jaws. That's it, that's it, that's a set, the shortest sentence in the English language that has all of the letters in it. The Hanukkah <laughs> fox snapped the Christmas goose's neck. Good. Listen, a goose <laughs> is not a VTOL bird. It cannot just like whoop up and go. It needs a running start. If this is a small enough pen, then we have a locked room mystery on our hands. When you <laughs> when you first read this, I was literally picturing a uh, picturing a fence 
just wide enough for the goose to be in it. Like, yeah. the goose wouldn't even have room to turn around. We're talking about the, the barrel of a goose gun. Yes. But then I thought, 12 feet high, the circumference of a foot tops? I don't know, the diameter of a bird. You built a, a, a goose silo for your one goose. This would all be a lot funnier if this wasn't how most of the chickens we eat are raised. Gee, many creamy. What's up? Hey, you know what we feed them? Fossil yeah. fuels. Lots Think about it. Agenda. Wake up. Wake up. It's a hotter one out there. <laughs> We're boiling our geese alive. This is my new character, Guy Laughing at the Thing That Isn't That Funny. Who uh, stole the Christmas Chris goose? Who Sorry. Who stole the Christmas goose? Justin, you made a lot of jokes, but no firm denial. It was me. I stole the Christmas goose. Uh, I thought the goose it's stole It's gonna be okay. I've, yeah, I know, it seems like quite the turn, but we gotta, we gotta end for it, don't worry. We got, we're not like J.J. Abrams, we got an actual outro for this thing. What the, what is going on? No, 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 shut up, it was a lost joke. It wasn't like a uh, Star Wars thing. It was not topical. It was don't not worry. topical. Don't, don't be, don't get it twisted. Um, I, here's a true story. I ate goose for the first time two years ago. Uh, my mother-in-law made it for Christmas, and it tasted fine, but I realized that it is very hard to add a new animal to the list of animals you eat. Like, it's just like, it moves them from one column into another column, like, welcome, I'm eating you now. <laughs> welcome to the things I eat. Welcome to the Justin Tummy Club. <laughs> welcome to the Tummy Club. <laughs> Put now, back when, in. now when I see you flocking through the sky, I think, mm-hmm, yep. Mm -hmm, yep. <laughs> Why don't you flock on down here? Bring when that... you do that, does it push another one out? I add a goose and now I can't have no. fish anymore. No, that's a bad thing. Eventually it just becomes me like, matter eater lad. Just like, ah, I'll eat the mic, I don't care. So it's kind of like a weird version of the most dangerous game where you just have to keep eating until you've eaten the most dangerous animal and then you have to eat the man. Most, the most delicious game. And like Justin's great, 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 great grandchildren will be like, all right, Capybara, you're the last one. <laughs> Come on, it's on. The most elusive game, Come Capybara. On. Come on, Capybara. Well, no, they're the cutest game. Why would you want to eat one of those? But then you eat them and you're like, I caught them all. I've had it all. Capybara, uh, dolphin, bulbasaur, all of it. <laughs> time to turn in, turn in my tummy decks. Uh, all right, all right, coral. Science says that you're an animal, but I don't believe it. But there's only one way to settle this. Come on in. Come on in, the tummy's fine. <laughs> Plankton, I'm just, I'm gonna hate this. But I gotta know. I can eat a billion of you at once. Think of the possibilities. Hey, uh, hope everybody's having a real good time at this live show we recorded. Uh, before uh, we thank any of our sponsors, I wanna say a huge thank you to uh, Heart, this is the uh, theater group uh, that uh, provided our carolers for us during the show. It didn't come in so great through the final mix. It was one of those, you had to be, the, one of those Patton and McElroy, you had to be there moments. But uh, every summer they do theater in, uh, in Huntington, and if you uh, can get by, I think you're really going to enjoy it. I love it. I'm Two thumbs up. I love theater. I love Heart. I love Huntington. Last year they did a play that our daddy wrote. I want to say a big thank you also to Zip Recruiter. Uh, when you're short staffed, there's no time to deal with dozens of different job sites. With ZipRecruiter.com, you can post to 100 plus job sites with one single click and be instantly matched to candidates from over 6 million resumes. I'm so hungover. I'm just realizing I'm so hungover from last squats. Look at me. I'm, we're all together right now. It's the day after candle nights. Day one, when we did our live show. This is day all, zero. It's day zero, and now we're all together, and my brothers are watching me do my post-hangover squats. Watch me now. Squat. That's one. Two. Watch reps. Watch you watch keep me. squatting. Watch Travis. Me. Driven, you are doing an excellent plie. Zip Recruiter has been used by over 400 businesses, and you can try 400, it right. 400,000. 400. 400 well, it is also over 400. Okay, you are right, but <laughs> the copy does say 400,000. Go to ZipRecruiter.com slash my brother. That's ZipRecruiter.com slash my brother. Uh, no, Travis, you do it. Go. Burn it. Okay. Well, we also are sponsored this week by Harry's. You've heard us talk about Harry's before, but in case you haven't, Harry's, uh, it, 
Haley's razors offer a high quality shave that's better for your face and your wallet. Maybe you've gone to like, I don't know, a Walgreens, a CVS, and you're like, I need to get some razor blades. And the dude's like, all right, well, first you have to find me. And he hides in like the snack aisle and then you got to find him and he unlocks the thing. And then he's like, these razor blades are going to be $100. I haven't shaved in a long time. Okay, great. And so Harry's, in fact, is much cheaper, but way better. You can get a starter set for just $15. And that includes a razor, foaming shave gel, or shave cream, and three razor blades plus free shipping. But if you go to harrys.com, you can get $5 off the starter set with the code MYBROTHER, all one word. Start shaving better today. Oh, we got a text to Got a quick text. Uh, I got a message for Ian also. It wasn't in the text. Hey, it's Ian. I'm texting you. I got a message for Fiona. All right, so let me try again. I strike that verse it. Hey, it's Fiona. I was reading the phone upside down. Hey, it's Fiona. I got a message for Ian, the text says. Wishing you the most magical birthday, wiggling to that nice blonde girl and making prostitutes. Remember, someone is going to die today. What is this? It's not Candle Nights is what it isn't. Uh, I'm sure they didn't mean for this to go up on our Candle Nights app. Travis is taking his shirt off. I love you guys so much. All right. Uh, yeah. Uh, happy birthday, Ian. And, uh, and, uh, and a happy Candle Nights and a happy... I wiggling, I suppose. Wiggling. Happy wiggling. Travis, I got another message. Hit me, dude. This message is for just Fisher parentheses done. Uh, and it's from Johnny Lev. To the best, best man there is. Congrats on finally squeezing that baby out. Now that the whole prego thing is over and you're free of responsibility, you can spend all your time planning uh well probably my planning my bachelor party. Good work. You're the best. Does this get me out of babysitting? It does, Johnny. Congratulations. And uh, joyous candle nights to everybody. Thanks again to everybody who came out to our show. Uh, we hope you had a lot of fun. We know we did. Uh, let's get back into it. Um, so one of the things heading into uh, candle nights we discussed on the show was that we didn't know all that much about Hanukkah. Um, and As represented by the decorations on stage, we tried... And we failed. There's just none for sale. I will Dollar say, General, not a huge Hanukkah selection. That's a regional problem and not really our problem. Uh, we tried. Just, you know, we tried. I've seen uh, one uh, delightful person here in a Hanukkah sweatshirt, and I appreciate that. Thank you. Yes. Oh, it lights up. How glorious. Oh, I love how that. wonderful. Um, so I wanted to take a minute. Um, I constructed a report. It, it wasn't even mine. Honestly, it wasn't even mine. I took a copy. I copied and pasted it from the internet, but it did have a lot of words that I didn't understand, so I had to translate them. And I would like to read it for you now. It's titled Hanukkah colon history. Unlike many Jewish holidays, Hanukkah, also known as the Festival of Luda, is not mentioned in the Bible. The historical events upon which the celebration is based are recorded in Maccabees 1 and 2, two books contained within a later collection of writings known as the Poopkins. <laughs> Although Hanukkah is considered a minor Jewish festival, today it ranks, along with Squeegee and Squelch, as one of the most beloved Jewish family holidays. In the year 168 BCE, the hungover Syrian tyrant Don Cheadle <laughs> sent his soldiers to Jerusalem. The Syrians desecrated the pizza roll. Will you guys just raise your hands if it gets anti-Semitic, like a little, like when, it, when you're anti-Semitic, like Not right you off, in the back. There's, there's like, there's Cheadle like, also abolished taters, outlawing the, outlawing the observance of Shabbat and the festivals, as well as booty tooching. Altars and idols were set up for the worship of Greek gods, and, and he offered Jews two options, conversion or Nantucket. On the 25th day... Like, pop, 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 pop. There they go, there they go, there they go. On the 25th day of the Hebrew month of croissants in 168 BCE, the pizza roll was renamed for the Greek god Tim Curry. A resistance movement led by a priestly family known as Jingles, um, or Maccabees, Developed against the cruelty of Cheadle, the head of the family was Bodacious, I'm actually, an elderly man. I'm actually learning a lot from this. His son, Hamilton, became the chief strate strategist. 
That's not one that's added in. That's just a word I can't yeah, say. Yeah, just try to say strategist, but mix it up. Oh, I didn't say it. Never mind. I'm an and, idiot. And, <laughs> and military leader of the resistance, though outnumbered, Hamilton Jingles and his fighters miraculously won two major battles, routing the, city, uh, the Syrians sloppily. Hanukkah, which means moist, is the festival. <laughs> is the festival a lot that of hands on that one that one had that is, one had an impact on the audience is the festival that commemorates the purification and undulation of the temple following and this not a word changed the, uh, following the defilement caused by the greeks during their occupation of the holy place today the holiday reminds jews to rededicate themselves to stand against forces that would destroy judaism and to keep alive the flame of jewish religion culture and people no, you really are just going so full that, on wikipedia right now so that it may be passed on to the next generation the according to the legend <laughs> when the maccabees entered the temple and began to reclaim it from the greeks they immediately rebit, relit their nur timid nope um, which translates to... Yes, boo louder, feed me, feed me, feed me that energy! Which translates to lugubrious milk toast. Which burned constantly in the temple and has a parallel in our synagogues to this day. In the temple, they found a single jar of calamari. There's whaling! Which, There's actual whaling! <laughs> which was sufficient for only one day. The gallivant, who was sent to secure additional calamari, took eight days to cavort, and miraculously, the single jar of oil continued to hogwash until his return. I am feeding on it. The rabbis of the Talmud attributed the eight days of Hanukkah to the, uh, to the miracle of this single jar of calamari. Oh, the yeah, yeah. end! I'm gonna, I'm gonna say something a little contentious here. I don't take it out of context, ever. But if it means that that hadn't just happened, then I wish Hanukkah had never been invented. <laughs> that's how, that's how it, oh, yeah, I got a hand raise on that. I guess that's fair, but if it could save us from that, I think it would be worth I it. I thought that was informative and insightful. You did go on a weirdly like educational run there. I wanted like a, like a Christmas special from the mid eighties. <laughs> I wanted there to be one moment where everyone went, huh, and then came back to hating it. And then Screech still does run in after they learn a lesson about drugs and like. And makes here's a fart noise. Screech right now. <laughs> I'm sorry about booing you. That's all right. This past Thanksgiving, my partner and I celebrated Thanksgiving at my parents' parent. Oh, sorry, par partner's parents' house. The parents live locally, but since we wanted to spend Friday with them, hold as on, well, wait. You stuttered through a, a phrase that I really enjoy. My partner's parents. After that. I celebrated Thanksgiving with my partner's parents. Just do the whole thing. This past Thanksgiving, my partner and I celebrated Thanksgiving my partner's parents' house. The parents live locally, but since we wanted to spend Friday with them as well, and since we don't have our own car, we thought it might be best to just sleep over Thursday night. Thursday night is highlighted here on Travis's iPad in case he wants to make an appointment for them. <laughs> However, maybe they just stop by, see how things are going. Uh, however, we were informed by the parents that it is expected that we would not share a bed. My partner and I have been together for nine months. We're both well into adulthood. We have completely lost this audience. And the, yeah, because it's like not funny. I was, oh. Uh, Matt, sad libs is a bad bit. Nobody likes it. So say we all. My partner and I have been together for nine months. We're both well into adulthood. And parents Nerds. like me are progressive in most every other way. My partner and I are, of course, classy enough to not get busy on the family room futon during our stay. But we're not married and have no plans for it. So I'm not sure when circumstances would change the parents' mind about this. And the problem is certain to rear its ugly head again. Brothers, how could I convince them to let us sleep how we are most comfortable seeking the solace of shared slumber in Cincinnati? What if, what if your partner's parents are just saving this for a gift? So you, maybe not like 2019, under the, under the Candle Nights bush. What's that? <clears throat> Oh, it's an envelope. Oh, no, it's probably a gift card at Home Depot. Boo! But then you open it up. It's not. It's a little letter from your partner's parents, and it just says, go for it. <laughs> Connect four. Do it! <laughs> what if it just says, we know, and we're cool? Because that, you have to assume at that point, 2019, three years, four years from now, they know they're doing it. I like more of a demand. Go for it. Do it. No. 
What's worse? Like, what? That's worse, right? Definitely, that's worse than yeah. saying, like, go for it. <laughs> You're cool. Uh, I want to say that I, I do like. Aren't you excited to be able to sleep, like, with the room as cold as you want and the fan on? Because I'd be, like, a little excited about that. Like, oh, I'm just going to make it, like, 40 degrees in here. And uh, my question is if the debate is whether or not you can sleep on the family room futon together. If you're not allowed to sleep together, where do you end up if the family room futon is the best option? You're in the garage. You're like, the what's garage. the other option that you get secluded to? You're in the dog bed. Well, you have to sleep with the parents. <laughs> <laughs> Meredith, Meredith and Joey, I had a bad dream. <laughs> Jeremy. That you guys are closed-minded. <laughs> Jeremy, we've laid some blankets on the floor, and now you'll listen to us do it. Yeah, we just... No, 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 no. This is how two adults make love. <laughs> Take notes. We're still, very, we're, still no bad words. Just remember, no bad words. Challenge we're very ideas. progressive. We just want to make sure you know what you're doing in there. With it. Watch Meredith and Joey for a second. <laughs> Sorry? You probably thought that was an affectation. Oh, that's her names with W's. <laughs> we had very poor aggressive parents. Well, now they're just... Yeah, that doesn't make... Um, do you guys want... How about we do one final Yahoo, and then we... Turn... Not the final Yahoo. No, 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 no. We'll do another Yahoo. Okay. And then we'll turn it to the audience and do some audience questions. Okay. Um, we'll just... Don't line up or anything. We'll just yell at you when you put your hands up and, and call you forward. Does everybody know the rule about questions at live shows? It's printed on the microphone. We brought no bummers with us, by the way. You can see it right there. And from... also, no cursing. Yeah, no yeah. cursing. Oh, Our I fr... Yeah. I, I swan to John, you guys are gonna think it's funny. I'm gonna immortalize myself by ruining candle nights. No, I mean, you will. Yeah, it'll work. For, for this room, but you don't make it on the recording or any podcast recording from now to the end of time. We got the we, juice to make that happen. You wanna it. be on Marin? No dice. <laughs> we know, we wolf. Well, we'll find somebody who knows that guy and just say, like, hey, they're off limits. I just want to send in. Oh, I just want to finish oh. my plug. Thank you, Ear Trumpet Labs. They made yeah, that thank for you. us. Uh, Beautiful no microphones. Uh, it's sent in by Zoe Kinski. Climbing that ladder, Zoe Kinski. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's by Yahoo Answers user Passenger Wow Widow, which. Sorry? Oh, it's okay. World of Warcraft Widow is saying, okay. It wow. sucks either ways, but like it's better than like, wow, I'm a widow. Wow. <laughs> wow, you're a widow. Wow. Yeah, there's a little Christopher Walken in there. That's the only word I can do. If Dwight was here, he's got a pretty good walking, but my only walking is wow. Wow. All right. Uh, uh, passenger Wow Widow asks, if I am a super good girl, will Santa bring me Robert Downey Jr. for Christmas? <laughs> What I love about this question is the thought of Santa showing up at Robert Downey Jr.'s house like, it's time. <laughs> the, the, the bargain we made when I put you in Iron Man. <laughs> time to pay the piper who is Santa. And you know, I would like to think of RDJ that he would go, I get Ooh? it. I get it. RDJ. Sorry. Okay. RDJ. Your personal friend and RG mentor. I'm pretty Hollywood at this point. Yeah, sure. Then he would go, you're right. You're right. And just walk into the bag. No, this is on me. I've lived, a I've lived a good life. Could it be a... Uh, Tell Mark Ruffalo I said I love you. <laughs> Could it be a uh, Robert Downey Jr.? <laughs> All right. I'm Bob Downey the second, And I, I want to thank you for having me to your boudoir. I hope to uh, show you some challenging yet comfortable love-making positions. Uh, shall we begin with the smooches? Shall we begin with uh, some heavy petty? <laughs> I hear it's somebody's special day here. I heard you've been a very good girl. This, this beats the heck out of the tile store. Wow, I'm uh, really excited to be the Bob Downey in your boudoir. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know any other words for it other than boudoir. I meant to learn some, but I didn't. It's a busy season at the tile store. I was in a bicycle accident and I lost some words. 
<laughs> Luckily not bicycle or accident, because can you imagine? How would I even describe my situation? I was in a two-wheeled mobile accident. <laughs> you know pedal pedals? I did a bad on one of them. <laughs> on a pedal pedal, I did a bad, and boom, ouchie. I <laughs> bopped down the second. I have a head contusion. Bob Downey II, I'm glad you're here. You're better than Robert Downey Jr. You've explained this to me 18 times, Bob Downey II. Sorry, I had this bicycle, uh-oh. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think there's a sliding scale for how good you have to be and how bad Robert Downey Jr. has to be. Because it's like, you can be as good as you want, but unless Bob Downey Jr. has failed Santa in some way, I don't think that he can close on that deal. Um, I don't know, I didn't like Iron Man 2 very much. That... So now he has to be someone's servant? Yeah, I guess so. That's a, that's a uh... pretty high standard now that I think about it. I don't want to be held to that standard. We all have off days. Questions from the audience? Yeah, let's okay. do it. Um, let's, start, let's start on this side. Uh, 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 you want it too much. Yeah, you stood up. No, you weren't the first hand up. Yeah, yes, with the finger pointing at themselves. Yes. Hi, hello, hey, hey. Not you, Michael Sullivan, stage manager for our live extravaganza. We'll do you do later. You? Hello, sir, what is your name? My name's Jordan. Jordan, Jordan hi. do you understand the rule? No bummers. No and, no bummers. and how can we help? Oh, okay, so I travel a lot for work and I have to be in a place for like a long period of time on like a project. Okay, can you speak just right Super yeah, close to the mic? Like an old timey radio show. Okay. Yeah. S Pretend you're doing an ad you can for just Ajax. lean down. You don't have to do a weird squatty thing. <laughs> you bend at the waist, like, right? I don't want level. to assume. Can you stop like kibitzing for a second? Sure can. So I have to travel for work and to be in a place for a long period of time and I'm living in a corporate apartment in New York City, and I, I'm single, and I can't really nice. decorate. I'll buy the rights to your TV show right now. <laughs> right now. How ready are you to mingle? How zany is your neighbor? Uh, the mingling is like mid-level ready okay. to mingle. Okay. I am single and but, somewhat ready to mingle. <laughs> so as I am ready, like I need to, right now it's like filled with like Pier 1 imports, like mm. gross furniture and stuff, because I, I didn't furnish it. So, but oh. I also can't put anything permanent in because I'm leaving in March. So how Ooh. do I put together an apartment that feels like me without spending any money and also... <laughs> so let me understand. You can't spend any money and nothing permanent, but it has to really scream Jordan. Yes. That's exactly it. Can you write over the wall <laughs> to the door, on the outside of the door, Jordan's place? <laughs> Well, I, I did that, so that's done. Oh, done. Darn. Done. Ooh, that was close. <laughs> can you, um, can you uh, turn on the furniture upside down? Just like, Jordan lives here. He's a real free spirit. <laughs> you, you know Jordan. He's a real free spirit. He doesn't like to sit on things. He doesn't like to sit on things. You know those uh, Noonie and Noonie from that funny SNL skit? He's like, those people. Cool. Um... <laughs> Uh, yeah, Jordan, you're kind of tying our hands. Because normally I'd just say, like, go out and just buy the most expensive rug there right. is. Um, okay, wait, 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 wait. Stop, everybody, wait, wait, stop. Wait, wait, stop. wait, 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 shut up, shut up. Unless. 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 Okay, now there will be some investment in this. But you need to get a storage unit, move That's... all the furniture into that unit. Okay. Uh -huh. And then get nothing else in your unit. Ooh. And then when people come in, you look at them in the eye and you say, think about me, think about everything you know about me, picture the furniture. Oh my God. <laughs> and he, then they... he is the pan. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, bang a rang. Then oh, you there have... you are, Jordan. Yeah. Oh, there you are, Jordan. Knowing, knowing what you know about me, like just... Inflatable just, furniture. You're doing it, and then the furniture will appear. Yeah, this, this bangerang, a, you did it. This is a futon made of dogs. <laughs> what? I'm gonna have a seat on it. Oh God, I broke my tailbone. Jordan, I trusted you. I trusted you, Dream Furniture. That's so Jordan. I feel so unsafe <laughs> in Jordan's place. Jordan's always breaking tailbones. <laughs> Okay, can you make them draw a picture and then decorate the apartment with the picture that they drew? It's like, this is what others have seen. What will you see? <laughs> I'll be back in three hours. 
I hope we didn't have anything pressing to do. <laughs> did we help you? Yeah, Jordan? did we do that it? That was so good. Thank, Thank you, so Jordan. Cool. It's your middle this time. Uh, well, oh, I picked the last one. Travis, you yes, picked the middle. Yes, you Yes, yes. mustache. <laughs> that was fun. And a jaunty hello. Well, hello. Oh, boy. He's oh, got a real character on our hands. Oh, I see what we're doing here. What is your name? <clears throat> My name is Bobby. Hi, Bobby. Bobby, do you understand the rule? No. Gosh darn bummers. Oh, yeah, oh there you go. Good. Okay, so uh, I travel in town for the holidays every year, and over the past couple of years, my family's been moving Christmas back gradually. Now, because I'm traveling in, I can't necessarily get off work for the 18th. Sure. Oh, whoa. How do I stop Christmas from sliding into September? Okay. <laughs> I, I must stop Christmas from coming for now. <laughs> um, did you, have you already experienced Christmas, Bobby? It's been it's been a little while. I can, okay, uh, like this year, 2015. Has your Christmas come and gone yet, or are you? Oh, like, I missed it. What? I missed it. Oh, you missed it. Oh, cool. dag, dag. I bet it was you good. Know, too. Oh wait, hold on. I've got this. Do you know what's great here, Bobby? Whenever you roll up is Christmas. Yeah. You Christ didn't miss Christmas. They did Christmas early. Uh, that's what we learned from the Grinch. You stole Christmas, actually. If it's not the exchanging of gifts, it's the people around you. So you could like legitimately say like. I don't think you did have Christmas because Bobby wasn't here. <laughs> Check the pictures. Bobby. Check the pictures. Do you see Let's Bobby? Let's go to the videotape. Let's go to the videotape. Yeah, Bobby, I'm I've seen only... no Bobby here. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no Bobby. I don't think uh, you had Christmas because it's about the people. I've only known you for 110 seconds, but I just know you are Christmas. <laughs> I'm not convinced you're not a bunch of presents stacked up in a <laughs> jeans and a shirt. <laughs> Well, you don't have to. I don't. I'm not looking at you naked. I'm not looking at your naked boxes. <laughs> well, Can now I am. He was unwrapping me with his eyes. <laughs> Can you imagine anything more? I think you do a protest Christmas on December the 25th. Can you imagine anything more rad than Bobby sitting on the floor, with a little Santa hat, pile of presents in front of the tree by himself? Just like, well, this one's the sandwich maker. <laughs> Thank you to whoever got this for me. If anyone would like to join me, I'll be in the living room while his family's in the kitchen. I don't know where we I don't went know wrong. What he's doing. It's New Year's Eve already. <laughs> Over here, we're a week ahead. <laughs> oh, wait till they lap you, and then it's Christmas again. <laughs> the stupid thing is, they should be pushing it later because they can get all the decorations at like 50% off. <laughs> Hence our entire like scene right now. <laughs> Bobby, does that help? Very much so. Great, Thanks, great, Bobby. Great. Justin, pick right, somebody from the right. My turn. If you're a, if you're a uh, non-dude, can you raise your hand? I want to get a non-dude. There you go, right here. Come on up. Oh, you bleed the mic is this so far away. This Christmas finds All right, let's give him a big round of applause. Woo! Woo! Hello, and what is your name? Hello, my name's Nathania. Hi, Nathania. Is that with an N, Nathania? Yes, it is. Okay, That's welcome. The... And do you. you know the rule? Yes, I do. No bummers. Okay. Okay. How can we help? So, my husband, he's the best. Okay. All right. it sounds like you don't need any help. Yeah, sounds, yeah, it sounds like you're fine. I don't. He's awesome. He's okay. here. I've been next. Wait, I've been waiting for the results of that contest all day. And to find <laughs> out, like, this, Nathania? <laughs> I know. This how you do me? What can I say? I need, is, is Steve Harvey should come out and announce the results, right, guys? Topical. And the best husband is Griffin McElroy. No, wait right. a minute. I'm like, then, I'm like on like news alerts, like what just happened, so I can reference that. <laughs> Freshest ref. Freshest ref award goes to Griffin. No, wait, it went to Travis. Steve Harvey, not again. <laughs> hey, hey, what was your how question? Can we help? So he, he, um, he knows what he likes, and it's hard to get him gifts. Uh -huh. Sure. So I don't want any advice on what gifts to give him. Good. I want to know how can we, myself and his family, make him like whatever gifts we give him? <laughs> Nathaniel, is your husband here right now? He is. He brought me here 
this is my Christmas present. Oh, oh man, he won. Nice. nice. Like, that's hard to beat. He's the best. Okay. Yeah. Mr. Nathaniel. Can, Can raise I your give hand? you... Did you raise your hand? Yes. Uh, sorry, what? No, we're sticking with Mr. Nathaniel. Yeah, I, that's not that important. You're not at the microphone. <laughs> I'm going to tell you a lesson that I learned when I was about eight years old. And that is that gifts given to you are not for you. They are for the person who gave them to you so that you can be thankful for all the love that they showed yeah. you in that gift. Get a and catch. if you look up from the gift and go, eh. You're the worst. Get a... No. I, I doubt, learned that at eight. I doubt very much he does that. But there is some nuance to the situation that Travis is not. That is impossible. If you... The, but this is the, the, the lie in what you've just said is that if you really love somebody and you cannot tell mm, instantly that they don't like something, like, uh, right away, everybody... You oh, it's know, a lie we right? tell each other. It's a lie we tell each other, like, oh, you hated that, and I know you hated that, but, like, that's not what this is about. I get it. Yeah, you have to go to your grave, like, no, absolutely not. I loved it, and it was the best coffee maker I ever got in my entire life. I never used it. Get, it was great. Get a present-receiving catchphrase. <laughs> it's, what? It's a, no, listen. <laughs> It's something I've been doing for years, and you guys probably haven't noticed. I'm kind of part in the kimono right now, but... Um, Don't look! Uh, get a present-receiving catchphrase, so every time you get a present, no matter what it is, it doesn't matter. This is a, this is a gift agnostic little idiom, and don't steal mine, because I, I need it, but just be like, Oh, tight! <laughs> That makes so much sense now. Yeah. Every, you know how for but the everybody, past, like, but everybody has one of those, right? I mean, like, yeah, yeah. I, let me. Mine is like, <laughs> I'll open it. Open, open, open. That's a home run. <laughs> I do it every after every gift. Uh, mine is just this. Ooh, Travi like. <laughs> Uh, Christmas really is a like real Travis. horror show. <laughs> yeah. we, we don't get Travis gifts anymore. <laughs> Not even invited. Nathaniel, can you tape a 20 to it somewhere? <laughs> Just tape a 20. Who doesn't like that? Yeah. Just hand him a 20. Just hand him a 20 tape to, like, whatever thing And ask for $5 back. Or a fake <laughs> price tag on it that's a big, a high price. <laughs> Like, like one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Griffin, I'm worried that this side of the audience didn't see it. Could you do that one more time? Like a high please? price. Like one million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> um, Never uh, forget You it. can purchase the GIF outside after the show. Don't worry, folks. Uh, yeah, we got DVDs. Nathaniel, did that help? Absolutely. Great, Great. Thank thanks. Thank you. See, she's going to lying if she didn't like what she got. Let's go for one more from the back. Uh, the back and the way back. Flashy Hanukkah shirt. Flashy Hanukkah shirt, you yes. earned it. And I don't mean like ostentatious Hanukkah shirt. No, it's literally, it's a, it is illuminated. Hello. Hello. Did somebody just boo me? No. no. They, they no. said hello in a very hello. dramatic manner. They said hello, the opposite of boo you. They did a hello from downtown. Hello. What is your name? My name is Shaylin. Hi, Shaylin. Hey, Shaylin. Hi. Can you scoot over to the, just close there the door? Perfect, there we go. go. Let her no. rip. Okay. Hi. Um, go for it. I was wondering if I was to decorate my home for candle nights next yes. year, uh -huh. what color scheme would you say is the official color scheme of candle nights? <laughs> no, this is a good question. No, this is a good question. And it's, it's honestly, it's honestly as, as one of the three dads of candle nights. Um, it's one of the reasons why the holiday hasn't caught on as much as uh, we would want it to. Because um, the problem is, the color of candle nights is fire. <laughs> and you hear, you just heard me say that, and your brain thought like, oh, red. No, you mean No, no, no. You, you misunderstand. It's fire. <laughs> To do, to do a house up like that is... Arson. <laughs> I mean, it's arson. Everything you see in front of you is rigged to explode when the show's over. 
It's going to be quite the uh, Don't quite stick the, around. The show. Don't stick around. Get out. I think that what we just did was illegal. <laughs> yeah, no, there's nothing Literally flammable. just cl claiming fire in a, a big stuff building, but fine. No. no, that was a joke. Clearly, it's parody fair use. Listen. <laughs> That's how fair use works. It's tricky, because inside, you get some candles, whatever. Outside, what do you do? Outside of a controlled burn or, like, <laughs> sick, like, butane fountains? Is that even a thing? <laughs> You could also, uh, I was going to say, like, project fire onto your house, but I feel like That's that might dangerous. go yeah. poorly. <laughs> they have a name for that, Travis. It's, a, it's somebody whose house is about to be gone. <laughs> like, you can't project fire onto your house. Oh, you meant a picture. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> got it. Not literal fire. I'm with you now. But still, the point stands. If somebody has a fire hologram on their house, your neighbor's not going to drive by and be like, oh, sick. <laughs> say they won't this year, but maybe soon. They'll be like, oh, candle night's nice. That's all the, that's all the holidays together. A controlled burn on the front facade of your house. Get an expert, oh, get an expert to get this controlled burn going, <laughs> but just have it spell out, it's cool. <laughs> this is cool. This is cool is fine. But don't call the police, Dave. <laughs> Again. Unless this, if this doesn't, if this <laughs> stops spelling out, this is cool. Unless, oh my unless, God, call the police or the fire people. Unless this is also on fire, Dave. <laughs> then please tell me, Dave. I'm so scared. His house says it's all... <laughs> oh, no, oh, no. Number one. That's not a word. Stop being words. Get them. Get the fire... Is this a call about the house that's partway on fire? Yeah, we've heard about it. No, you don't understand. No, no, no. no. The worm has turned. <laughs> it got worse. Uh, does that help? That, that helps a lot. Cool. Great, don't do great, any great. of that stuff. Thank you. Yeah, I think that's going right. to do it. Okay, listen. Uh, all kidding aside, the fact that so many of you folks have who Raise your hand if you're not from West Virginia at all. Like, oh, my God. Uh, no. Wait, anybody uh, not from America? Just out of curiosity? All right. All right. All right. All right. Cool. 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 Um, thank you so much for coming to Candle Nights. Did you have a good time? <laughs> um, we, so, so, like, tweet nweet stuff to that effect. It's, um, sweet tweet hashtag like, Candle Nights. Hashtag Candle Nights. Like, I had a great time, so we can, like, keep doing it. Not that, like, so, not like the man is going to keep us from doing it. Like, it's pretty much just <laughs> us and, and Chase. And you can't shut us down, um, Obama. Thank you, by the way. Thank you. Huge, huge, huge thank you. To, there's so many people I have to thank, but uh, Chase Henderson put on this show. He's a promoter of our show. Chase Henderson. All of Chase's volunteers who helped out. Thank you so, so much. Thank you to Michael Sullivan, who was our stage manager. He did a great job. Thank you to um, uh, Dwight Slappy. Am I saying that right, Dwight? Great. Dwight Slappy for things about sheets. Thank you to Sydney Smurl McElroy. Is it McElroy? Is it McElroy? McElroy from Sawbones. I, I would also like to say thank you to Teresa McElroy. And to um, Rachel McElroy. Let me pick yes. back on this. And Clint McElroy and Carol McElroy, 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 who did all of the beautiful decorations was, that you see on stage. Uh, thank you to uh, 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 Jason and uh, Tyler Eldridge for yes, being our For being our the Druids, Druids. that stole Dwight away. Thank you to Boyd Smith for being the Grinch. Okay, th that's all the Oh, wait, one more. Thank you to Josh and the folks at Billions for helping us set yes, up. Yes, and all the thank carolers. Who, oh, and yes, the carolers. So we got Dad. 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 And thank you to Riley. Riley Smurl. Riley Smurl, thank you so much. I, I just want to, like, we, I referenced this at the beginning about how this was a swearing day. Uh, it got really thorny there, in the, like, right before we Yeah. Had to my baby, about, an, about uh, literally exactly the time we were supposed to leave, my baby threw up and had a temperature of 101. So it was like, whoa. She's fine She's now. fine now, but it was I like, got a video of her playing Ring Around the Rosie. Like, she's good. But it was like, it was pretty intense there. So... Thank you to, uh, let's have another hand to Sydney, who didn't really want to come, but did anyway. But yeah, did, because she loves you. She loves you. And it Charlie, got... if you're listening to this in the future, uh, we're cool. You're fine. Yeah. You made it. My point, my point was it got really thorny, and I got so stressed out because we got here, and everything was running behind, and I was, like, really worried that it was going to be terrible. But, like, all of our friends and family came together to help us 
put this on. And it was real inspirational. It was a genuine Candle Nights miracle. So thank you all so much. Um, and thank you to you, the people who, like, if you came and stood in line out, I, I understood it was raining. I'm sorry about that. And if you, if you came, like, a long way to come see us, that's, that's awesome. Um, we're going to be uh, over at a bar called The Lantern for a little bit. Big fans, yeah. Some lantern heads in the house. Uh, it's a fourth and eighth, right? Fourth Avenue and Eighth Street. Is that right? Yeah. Right around there. Thank you, Sullivan. Uh, so, so we'll be we'll be over there, um, and it's a fun place. And uh, is that gonna do it for us, Ditto? I think so. You want that final Yahoo? Uh, we're gonna do a final Yahoo. Yeah. Well. Fi- uh, yeah. Yeah. Final Yahoo, and then. We'll then we've got a special Candle Nights Carol to the, go out. There's on. not a lot of Candle Nights Carols. There is one. Uh, and we're going to uh, perform that for you, but we do have a final uh, Yahoo for you. Calm down. This one is standing by Zoe Kinski, climbing that ladder. Zoe Kinski, it's by. Yahoo answers user. Check. Sorry, something is going wrong. Oh no, this one was Chuck Yeager, too. Chuck Yeager asks again. Man, he's active on Yahoo. <laughs> Did you think Mrs. Doubtfire was hot when you were a kid, or was that just me? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name uh, has been Justin Tyler McElroy. My name has been and will always be Travis Patrick McElroy. I'm Griffin Andrew McElroy. This is a Candle Night song. <laughs> Strumming my sixth string. No. Nope. You already goofed on it. The words are on the screen. Read him. Okay. I followed him. Wait, where are you starting? Where are you picking up? From the beginning of the song! <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. I would have been fine. I would have figured it out. I'm a f- uh, frigging professional. Oh! No, no, no! That's two! He didn't finish it. He didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. I didn't finish it. And... I was going to say professional. Go ahead, Griffin. Professional. <laughs> Let me know when you're ready for me to. Oh my God, just go into it. Living on sponge cake. Watching the sun bake. All of the tourists are covered with oil. If you were in the show, come on up. Nobody's gonna come. Summon my six string. Come on, Dad, Riley. Out on my front porch swing. Smell of the shrimp, they're beginning to boil. They're sitting in Dwight Slappy. Wasted away again in Margaritaville. A druid surgeon for my lost shaker of salt. Salt, salt, yes, sir. Some people claim that there's a wolf on the blame. It's nobody's fault. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's do the chorus one more time. We're going to drop the guitar. And I just want to hear everybody. Let's, let's share this moment together. You ready? No, that's cool. I get it. <laughs> five, six, five, six, seven, eight. Wasting away again in Margaritaville. Let me hear you. Come on, everybody. It's Candle Nights. Everybody. Searching for my lost shaker of salt. Salt! 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 It's a thing. Some people claim that there's a woman to blame, but I don't. It's nobody's fault. What do you think? One more time? One more time? Come on. We actually sound like a drunk Jimmy Buffett concert right now.